Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Roto World Football Show. I am Patrick Darty, joined Tuesday, April 9th by Mr. Denny Carter and an extremely special guest, the Athletic Football Show's Nate Tice. He's writing over at Yahoo. He is educating Denny and I on positions that exist in football. He was right. just before we came on the air, told us about guard and center. I'm, I'm taking notes. Yeah, yeah, we've never heard of that before. <laughs> uh, but Nate, uh, truly one of the best in the biz. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention right off the jump. He's over at Denny and on calling it X at Nate underscore Tice. Yeah. And again, the writings at Yahoo, the podcasting is on the, wherever you can find athletic podcasts with Mr. Robert Mays, another friend of the show, and Mr. Dane Brugler, seriously the absolute best in the prospect business. Um, there's so much good stuff from Nate. Um, I'm just going to keep talking and never let him talk. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, really good idea for me too, since I'm losing my voice. Uh, how are yeah. you doing, Nate? No, as someone that has, you're like, you, before the show, you're like, how long, you know, kind of have, I could have told you is like the easiest bet in sports or easiest bet is that I will go over on every appearance <laughs> yeah. that I've ever been on. So I can assure you that, but I'm doing very well. I've noticed this is so zoomed up on me right now. I, I, I got knocked in my face by my 16, 17 month, <laughs> month year old son the other day while watching Bluey, uh, I took a bottle to the eye and I'm just Ooh. noticing it's like, my wife is like, right before I came on, she's like, Hey, it's, it's not looking good right now. It's like, great. I'm about to be on camera. <laughs> uh, no, it's the so, classic. Every podcaster is like, Oh my God, I've got like one off color blemish on the lower yes. right quadrant on my oh, face. Yes. And my wife's always like, what? I'm like, oh, yeah, no one cares. Although your wife did the opposite. <laughs> She said it's very visible. It she goes, it looks worse today. Like, cool. <laughs> She's like, are you gonna be on? A are you gonna be on camera? I'm like, yeah. She's like, she right. gave you some makeup, I think. <laughs> yeah, the first podcaster the uses makeup. Who began? Yeah, I, 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 I've done I, that once or twice on like a really bad one. I cut myself shaving a few weeks ago, and I was like, I showed my wife, and I was like, oh, I was like, I can't. I, I, what am I gonna do? I, I can't. I can't go on camera like this. And she was like, I don't see anything. I'm like, my face is is open and it's bleeding. That's that's what's <laughs> that what's red happening. spot. So how do you how do we not see that right now? <laughs> see, Nate, I, I'm the opposite. I just don't shave. I just like <laughs> that, that's that's just a great part about working at home and not having to interact with too many humans on a day to day business. <laughs> I, 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 I just just don't shave. I just don't I shave, shave twice just a day. day. I yeah, Denny, for, I for both of us. No one is more devoted to shaving than Denny. Denny knows I'm devoted to shaving right before the podcast always. So I'm always like really chancing Fresh. it. Like, well, today there's just going to be a huge cut on my lip. <laughs> and I just try, I was like bleeding during the show. I'm just trying to pretend nothing's yeah. going on. And Pat tries to time his shave so that he shaves within 12 seconds <laughs> of the start of the podcast. That's Barely an exaggeration. We <laughs> sparred for 90 seconds before we, we, we came on air, and that's what happened. You just, yeah, it's just whatever bruises or cuts, mm -hmm. you just come on and just roll with it. And never acknowledge it would be great. That's what I should do, is I should just come up with a bigger wound yes, each yes. show and just never, ever acknowledge yeah. it. Yeah. I did that last year. Sweet. I had like, I had like a skin thing taken off. Yeah, this is great podcasting. I love this. Uh, yeah, great guess. I'm going to come back on every week, right? <laughs> no, I had no, one of those taken off. And I just came on the air with just this big bandage just for like two weeks. Just never acknowledged it. Never talked about it. And a couple people were like, is Nate okay? Like, is he just bleeding from the ear? <laughs> I think Nate was uh, cut by a lone shark. And uh, yeah. you make fun of that not being podcast material. Uh, Denny and I, it's like all we do is talk about stuff that's not podcast material. It's, it's taking all my discipline, by the way. You mentioned 90 seconds for me not to talk about the eclipse for 90 seconds, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do, do it. it. We're not going to talk about the eclipse. We're going to talk about Nate's. Uh, we told Nate, yeah, don't. Don't talk about guards or center. We don't even know what those are. Uh, we <laughs> want to know about your favorite skill player position prospects. And not necessarily favorite, just some interesting guys you want to talk about. We're, of course, going to start a quarterback. I think we'll start with a, a fairly big name, yeah. Nate. Uh, but who is the first quarterback you want to talk about? Someone who may or may not have gone number two in your most recent mock draft, Mr. Charles McDonald. Yeah, and, and nice little pun in there. May or may not, and that is Mr. Drake May, and that is from North Carolina. I have I have kind of like associated with this guy because he's number one on my big board, and I stuck stuck with it. This has been since last summer when I was kind of was really ranking these guys with Dane, and I think him and Caleb Williams are just special. Uh, I think everyone's Caleb's the number one pick. I think everyone's just kind of going, yeah, no kidding, Nate. Way, way to really just tell us that. I won the Heisman, all this stuff, but May to me does a lot of the things and i understand i'm on a fantasy show here so that, that was also great patrick where you're like sorry we're just gonna talk skill guys it's like oh really yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> is this idp show can we talk yeah. about some of that stuff we're talking some well? idl idl yeah. <laughs> we have fantasy in bio on this show <laughs> yeah. we do literally a fantasy in bio <laughs> uh but but with may he to me has all the attributes of the skill set 
the mindset too of what the elite quarterbacks look like. The very good at the very least quarterbacks look like. If you look, talk about not even just top two, top four, but top eight guys, um, that's aggressive, uh, big, athletic. Uh, I think even fancy wise, that's been underrated. Even just some of the stuff I've read, May is one one of the best scramblers we've seen come out of college, and he's an efficient scrambler. He's not going to be a, I would say, a Josh Allen level of a rushing yardage, but he'll be pretty good at it, racking up some touchdowns and racking up some yards. And I think that's been underrated with him is his athleticism and creativity, his competitiveness as well, coming from like an, a family of athletes. But to me, there might be some learning curve as he learns what he can and get can can and cannot get get away with at the next level. But he's this big game hunter that. I think a lot of teams would kill for, especially if he develops how I think he'll develop. And I think he'll hit the ground quick, hit the ground running quicker than I think people are anticipating. So I'm very high on him. Uh, obviously, he has my number one guy uh, saying that as I like Caleb Williams a ton, but I think May is just as big of a prize as Williams is. Nate, I, I heard you on a recent athletic uh, football show talk about the, the footwork aspect of, of Drake May and, and uh, questions arising about that footwork. Uh, is that, an issue that can be ironed out on the next level? And did it have anything to do with the kind of offense that North Carolina ran with Drake May under center? I'll I'll, rever- I'll, go, I'll start with your last point. Yes, it did have to deal with the offense that Drake May was in. That wasn't very detail-oriented. And I think there's it's kind of getting lost by uh, by the backup quarterback brigade right now. It's not, you know, <laughs> Bill Walsh isn't coaching him, guys. <laughs> you know, and this, guy, this guy is kind of doing everything for his offense and making it work in an offense that would be, if you just took an average college quarterback in there, that team's winning three games, four games. Like that is not a good team that he had around Mm -hmm. him. Uh, I think it is fixable because even just if you want a narrative scout and just before you even watch the guy, he's young and he's athletic, which is okay. He has room to grow. Uh, And I think that's why you can just say like, okay, right there, narrative wise. Oh yeah, I could fix that. But watching him, I think some of the footwork stuff, like you said, Danny, would allude to is that that's just kind of how the offense is. They float to space. They move to space. A lot of traditional NFL offenses are one, two, three, ball out. Right. One, two, three, hitch, ball out. All that. The thing is, I see him do that. That's why I'm not as concerned. I see him operate on time and operate in that way. It's just mm-hmm. not the whole menu of things that you watch him do is, is involving that. So you are projecting a little bit, but to me, it's like he's already doing it. it might not be every play it's already right. there and he has the tool set that i think it could prove so uh, yes long story short if you want one sentence which you'll never get from me <laughs> yes i think he can improve on it <laughs> what do you think uh the chances are that you know especially early uh in if he starts you know week one for whoever drafts him uh that we're, we're going to get some like hair on fire play from drake may is that is that a likelihood or do you think that that can be reined in early on uh, i think there are going to be some stretches where it's like a pick and then the next place taking a sack and it's just like okay a little little bit of a little like to me i think he'll come to the league and i'm not saying this is a one-to-one but i'm saying maybe stylistically how he's played maybe year two of josh allen you know where it was like you see like oh shoot but then you see like three plays wreck okay all right all right all right okay back to the drawing board (laughs) i think he's he's just in fancy terms i think he's gonna be more viable and i don't believe in the year sitting thing like with him Mm -hmm. because i think that to me is more of a mental thing coming from a an offense where they don't have to handle much. It's a very simple offense, which I think it was, but they put a lot on his plate. So as far as mentally stuff, uh, mentally, mentally mm. stuff, like, as I'm <laughs> talking about mental, uh, talk yeah. about intelligence, yeah. but as far as great like, at mental, snap, yeah, <laughs> as far as all that kind of stuff. So that's why I think he'll hit the ground running quicker than I think people are anticipating because I think mentally he's more advanced than he's been getting credit for. Well, Nate, that's just a really interesting like point i feel like on drake may being maybe more ready made than people are giving him credit for because I, I do feel like he's talked about a lot as like he's, he's kind of a projectable guy uh, whereas i just like look at it on paper i mean i try not to remember like some of the crazy stuff i saw in the games uh like he's a pretty conventional prospect where he, he's young um he's huge he was pretty productive in college and so sometimes i feel like people are just like really like oversell like the supposed written not that a lot of people are doing this because he's still a consensus top two or three guy of course yeah. but like that, yeah. I feel like it's kind of being oversold that he's like a projectable guy. And that no, he's he's like a ready-made NFL franchise quarterback. And of course, it might not work because these things right. fail a lot. Um, but like, I don't really see many. You can nitpick anyone's resume, but I feel like that's what you have to do with Drake Mays is nitpick and not really. Yeah. Um, and this is more on paper. 
And I, I haven't like, I'm uh, not a film guy, but uh, yeah, that's just kind of how I feel. But statistically, I, I'm totally with you. And that's like, especially last year, which is, I think, getting lost in a shuffle. Everyone goes, oh, he regressed. I was like, well, situation regressed. It, he, he actually improved. He, as far as just the mechanical stuff and as far as some of the mindset stuff, but it was, he has one NFL player playing with him who is a guy that people are hyping up, Deontes Walker. But to me, is like a day three guy, like mm. a round four, round five guy. One. <laughs> and he's making him look like at times people are going, that guy might go in the first round because the quarterback's putting on the freaking money. It's like, the, you know, you got to kind of reverse engineer some of it. And I think even statistically, like you look at EPA, you look at big time throw rate, you look at, like I mentioned again, the scrambling stuff, like even statistically, he was, I think the second most efficient scrambler as far as first downs per scramble, I think on record. And oh, like, really? you know, so there's like underlying stats with him that are really good. And then you have the trait stuff and the big arm. He's throwing down field. The eyes, I think, are good. And I think he's going to interview well. And that's why it's it's weird. It's like people learn the wrong lessons with a lot of other guys. They're watching Brock Purdy and they go, no, that's what we want. As mm -hmm. opposed to the, the, the real elite guys <laughs> that are at the top. I don't know. It's like the lessons are a little wrong to me. We don't yeah. know, but maybe draft day he goes two, and it's just like we all forget about this. But like the last couple of months have been very weird, I think for me. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get into this in, in in a few minutes here, but I, I do think that um, the idea of the the NFL as a league that's evolving into like a, a check down league has mm -hmm. tainted the way that we see a guy like Drake May is like he has a big arm. So what? We don't. No one throws downfield anymore. Like that. The, you know, we we don't we don't do that anymore. And <laughs> And so I, I do think that five years ago, eight years ago, Drake May would have been seen maybe as a challenger for the, you know, for, for number one overall in the draft because of that athleticism. Now it's like, no, no, no. Yeah. Like you said, we, you got, you got Purdy, you got Tua, you got these guys who don't have great physical skills, but can operate highly efficient offenses that score a lot of points. Uh, so I, I think that that has kind of colored the way that people look at Drake May. Yeah, I those guys to me, Purdy too, and stuff like that. And I totally get what you're saying. It's like the kind of accuracy, timing, winning, and those offenses mm -hmm. and everything. And I think when you're going, I think those guys need more situation to boost them up. But I still yeah, think okay. they have a high floor yeah. and everything. And that's why, like a guy like May, is I, I I see what you're saying with all the defenses. Explosive plays are so hard to come by now, and it's because more zone coverages, more mm -hmm. stuff that these teams are doing everyone's running a very similar defenses now most of the league and i know you wrote about it recently right and and when you with those defenses they are daring you to try and find an explosive play either by the run game or a quarterback having to make a hard throw i call them hero throws mm -hmm. um the Just call, call them allen allen throws allen throws or or really i think the guy i think of right now is brady when he was with the bucks and he's just like <laughs> launching. I mean, just yeah. stuff over the middle. And that's what the, the guys have to do now. They they have to have that prerequisite skill, the, the balls to do this and the and the timing and the arm strength. Because, and this is why I think one of the receivers in this draft, Malik Neighbors, is getting a boost. Explosive plays are just so hard to come by. You need the guys that can create those. It, it's like a guy, it, it's, a, it's a lot of average and on base percentage right now, but you need the slugging percentage too. Yes. to kind of boost it out. So that's why I like May a ton because he can open up those opportunities that I think really only Caleb Williams is the other guy that can do it as much as he can and the legs and all that. So I, I get what you're saying. It ha you have to show that you can check it down and be safe. Mm -hmm. But when the opportunities are there, you have to push it. You have to be, you know, Stafford in the Super Bowl, throwing the no-look stuff. You have to be even Burrow. Um, they've had to change their game a little bit and that they were getting so many explosives that they had to become a check down team. They were the opposite of most teams. The other teams are having to find explosive plays the opposite way. So it's kind of a, a you need the guy that can get those opportunities when they're there because defenses will show it, but it's hard to get them. Sure. Denny, Nate is a true football knower, and he still knows what slugging percentage is. What is nothing is preventing you from knowing things about baseball? What's what's preventing me from being like Nate Tice and knowing <laughs> knowing things about baseball? Exactly. What is preventing you? Uh, what's preventing us from talking about one of ten? I feel like nineteenth year seniors in this quarterback class, Mr. Spencer Rattler, who has been in college football. I mean, it, literally since before the pandemic. Uh, was when yeah. this guy started playing, and all like the. Day two or three oxygen, Nate, is being taken up by Michael Penix and Bo Nix. Uh, but where does Spencer Rattler, can, does Spencer, Spencer Rattler get into this conversation? I honestly don't know a ton about like the draft perception of Spencer Rattler 
and like where he's projected to go and yeah. what makes Spencer Rattler interesting um, as, as a, a name and what is a, a deeper quarterback class by recent NFL standards. R- Rattler, yeah, he's been on the radar for forever. He was my preseason QB one in the 2022 draft. So which would 2014. 2014 so, draft. Yeah, so yeah, 2014. I think he was going against Cam Newton and Gabbert, I think were the guys. Yeah. Um uh so but with Rattler, the one number one thing with him in, in a negative sense is he he's had character stuff as far as he's selfish, isolated. I'm not speaking out of school here. Uh, you look at speaking out of school, that's a Norm McDonald thing. Talk about remember I was just talking about pre-show, talking about like things that you just say. I just stole a Norm <laughs> McDonald line. Um I've but, internalized you know, so many Norm McDonald I lines. Know. So I just, no judgment you know, there. Based off based off a lot of my life viewings from him, but <laughs> for better or for worse. Uh but he but going with that is that he was on a documentary in high school and you you see him yelling at teammates and stuff. And I think that was, there's a lot of truth to that as far as behind the scenes, his last year, apparently he showed some maturity and he has a lot of red alerts for me. First, the character stuff. Then he's not that big. He's not that fast. He did not time. Well, he did run the 40, which I will commend him for. A lot of guys are just skipping it now. He did. He ran it poorly, ran it poorly. So (laughs) it's like he filled out his name on the SAT and then that's all he did. And he got those points though. But he can do things that other guys, I think, picks, uh, picks, Penix and Knicks. I'll just combine them. Picks. <laughs> yeah. Let's be real. They're going to be throwing a lot of picks. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but he can spin it. He's just, an, he's an eye test guy. He's like, and that's why when we're talking about day two, maybe day three guys, that's what you're going on. You're going on a guy that can move in the pocket, throw a guy open. He had a terrible situation in South Carolina this last year. And he kept, battling back, battling back and making these throws and making his teammates better. So he's a guy that, again, I, I see him more of as a round three guy. I, th- I see all these guys, Knicks, Penix, and him as round three types. Um, but it's one that I would take a chance on because he unlocks things that I think Penix and Knicks do not as far as their throwing styles and everything. But his another negative is uh, Derek Klassen, who I think does a good job with the quarterback stuff, and really a lot. Uh, he does. Every position. Yeah, but he had a, uh, he had a great – kind of line about rattler is that he kind of has the baker mayfield problem where he thinks he's a better athlete than he is so he tries to run past guys and then you just see this defensive tackle running him down like slowly he does have that issue (laughs) i i respect baker so much for thinking he's fast you know because i think i'm fast too i'm not but i I do and so i can relate to baker thinking that he can sprint outside the high step baker loves like the high step guys he does kind of like late career russell wilson of course too (laughs) And it's better to think you're fast than you're slow, probably. Um, I that's funny for years on our early on our pod before anyone was listening. I, I always refer to Baker as Russell Wilson without the athleticism, and then now we're we're seeing that right now. And it's now, Russell. now they're like level, and it's like yes. I didn't mean that literally, but yes. here we are. <laughs> the Baker <laughs> tide is risen, the Russell tide is out to sea. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, so, you, you think Spencer Rattler is it? There's no such thing as for sure. You think he's a for sure day two pick? Yeah, or... I, I no way around one. I don't think anyone's sniffing that. That that's yeah, what's yeah, yeah. kind of crazy for me with the Knicks and Penix stuff. Even going round one, they have so many alarm bells for me that I'm I'm like, really. I I think they're all interesting round three guys. Like if you just whatever flavor you like, I think these guys are all as high end backups, maybe spot starters. Like Knicks, I've been kind of referring to him as Heineke plus. Like that's, that's kind of how oh. I picture him, like a real good backup, start you one or two games. And then you're like, yeah, that's why you're not a starter. Never mind. Uh, but the, the, and the panics to me is kind of a diet Coke, Byron left, which like, oh. you know, just, just needs a big platform, kind of the big operating area to throw from will push the ball, but then just kind of has some accuracy stuff that I kind of keeps me away from them. And they're old panics guy injury stuff. So that's other alerts for them. So yeah, all of them kind of late day two guys, but. I, I want. I'm curious for the landing spots because it's like will, a guy like Rattler. Say he ends up round three to the Rams, then it's like okay, like that's interesting to me. Getting him with McVeigh and behind Stafford, chilling out a little bit. Like, but if he goes to, I'm just making up a team here. The Cardinals. Oh, the Cardinals might might be uh, uh, the Cowboys. You know, like something like that. I'll be, eh, the Jags. Eh, you know, like that would be interesting. Not not as much fun for me. Yeah, like a team that just might actually develop them. A team that might not have to throw them into the fire like way too soon. It might exactly. just actually develop them. Sorry, Denny, you had something on the tip of your tongue. Well, I was just going to say that the the Penix left which uh, comp is off for this reason. You know, left <laughs> Penix, unlike left which, doesn't take eleven seconds to wind up the throw. 
And I, I think that that's what I remember most from Byron Leftwich yeah. is just him just taking forever to throw the, the darn ball. The ball would come down to his knee oh. as he was wide up to throw. And then it's really, it comes from their strides. They both take huge strides when they throw. So that's where the comparison comes from. And then yeah. someone took it and I was like, the pun was staring at me right in the face. They go, he's Byron left, which uh, and I was like, oh, God. The lefty. There you go. <laughs> it, was too, uh, it was too easy. That that's why I didn't. Uh, that's why I haven't used it this whole time. The, the Zoomers really should look up YouTube highlights of Byron Love. It would be hard to believe, especially like the kind of modern football we've gotten used to. He was yeah. just before it. People just are freaking out about Reggie White highlights, and I was just like, oh, and that that made me feel old. I was like, oh I wow. I mean, I was like ten then. It's like I still remember it at least. <laughs> I know it's true. It's very depressing. But Byron Love, which look it up if you do not know. Uh, Nate, with the receivers, you just wanted to, you just said you just wanted to buy any wide receiver who played for the University of Washington. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah. start with the big one, the one whose last name I still struggle to pronounce, Rome Adunze. Yep. Um, I think what do you want it. people to know about Rome? Who? You, I think you had the Chicago Bears trading up for Rome at, at number six. Maybe it was maybe it was Charles. Maybe it wasn't you. Charles did. We, you, we got we got we had fun there. <laughs> yeah, so you guys have uh, the Chicago Bears trading up for Rome Adunze at number six. What do we need to know about Rome? Ooh, there's just yeah. like a lot to know about. Yeah, he's checks every box like with Sharpie and circles it at, at receiver. He he's good at everything. Is he exceptional at everything? I will know. I, I wouldn't say that, but he he is just he's such a player that is the highest compliment I can give a player is that they're scheme and situation proof, meaning that a bad coach or a bad quarterback is not going to screw him up. Like they're still going to be able to, to contribute and be a good player statistically. Sometimes I don't know, but as far as like maybe just a football blocking, all the stuff that I get, you know, geeked up on that you guys probably really said, <laughs> Oh my, my late night tweets during the season, but it's, but with the dudes, I I've kind of compared him to like a, a plus version of Chris Godwin, where he can play from the slot. He can play outside. He's a ball winner. He's pretty good with the ball in his hands. He's a good route runner. Again, good, 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 good. Very good in some ways. He's big. He's like 215. He's I was going to say, don't bury the lead. He's actually big. He's um, 215 and ran a four, four, low 4-4, four, four, mid 4-4, four, four, and people are surprised by that. It's like, just watch him. He's running by guys. He's just, to me, it's, I think coaches are going to love him. I think everyone's going to love him. I think he another guy that they want to be a contributor and grow into a potential number one guy, which is all you can ask for is that day one they contribute and they have that room for growth. So I think some people are saying that maybe he's maxed out as far as how much more he can grow, but I still think that's a high ceiling. So it's like, all right, well, if we're 90% there, that's pretty cool. Like that's not a bad thing, I think, because of what his skill set is, but good hands just does everything so well. I just think he's going to be a really, really good pro. Yeah, I feel like if he's maxed out, he's almost he's entering the NFL maxed out in the same way that Joe Burrow was. Like, uh, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> like maxed out. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It's like we can work with that maxed out. Yeah. Oh, so maxed out's Pro Bowl. Okay. <laughs> maxed out <laughs> is right. seventeen hundred yards and yeah. on a national championship team. That seems pretty good. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty sweet. We'll, that's we'll pretty do sweet. that. We yeah. will do that. Uh, so <laughs> Roma Dunze, I think yeah. is good. I think Denny thinks is good. I can't yeah, remember. I mean, uh, he's good. We think he's good. I don't. I know less about Jalen Pope. Pope. Yeah. Pope? Can't speak. Pope. Uh, tell us about what we need to know about Jalen Pope. I I'm the speak. worst person to ask for names. By the way, I just look at Danny. No, Denny that. knows. No one. You're not worse than me. No, oh, no right. one's worse than that. I apparently can't. How many replies Pope? a day do you get when people any name I get wrong, I get replies for months about it. It's like, dude, I. It's like one misstep. It's like. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I, you, oh, come on, black boy. man. Come on. Waiting. I, I called up uh, Paul Atreides, Paul Arrakis on our pod yesterday, and I've got <laughs> oh, at least a dozen good. people Are hitting me up me? about it. No, just, you will never hear the end of that. Nerd you card will. done. Totally done. I, I lit my nerd card like I was a yeah. war in Vietnam. Like it was just, I, I, dude, I, that was it. It was the, like, the I Dune truthers are coming for you forever. There's a lot of. I didn't yeah, really, how have you not become one yet? It seems very on brand for you to be a Dune truth. Me? Yeah. Are you uh, doing that? There's too much, too much going on. I would need to dedicate my entire life to it for like yeah. three years to become a. You a, will. It's somewhat. You'll do it 20 years after the fact, though. That's what you always do with cultural stuff. That, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> right. like when, game, when, when I'm like 60, I'll be into it. <laughs> like everyone's like, you got to read the Game of Thrones series or a, a Song of Ice and Fire series. You'll, it's like, it's not done. It's so not done, books, not close to done. Yeah. 
he probably die. So I'm gonna have some other guy reading the last one. The books is just too much. That's that's a lot of investment. I, you know, I, I, <laughs> I got an hour and a half to do every uh, like to have my time every night, eight to ten p.m. I can maybe squeeze in you know my fifty pages of reading. Yeah, there's <laughs> so much Game of Thrones, so much Dune lore. There's a lot of Washington receiver lore. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so back to Jalen Pope. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry, the, I, I I like going far afield, but I I oh, got that segue God. in my mind like I gotta hit this one. This yeah. No, Robert. Robert's half of Robert's job is just reeling me back in as I start talking about Louie and stuff. Uh, but Jalen Polk is everything I just said about Dune saying I feel like I'm being lazy here. He checks every box, uh, but it's uh, he's a Diet Coke version of Dune, uh, Dune's Day. That's I, I don't think of him as an upside of a number one, but I think he's going to be a really, really good number two in this league, maybe to that Robert Woods type kind of tier. Like that's kind of where I see his upside being. He's not the best athlete. He's more of an adequate athlete. But he can play inside. He can play outside. He blocks real well. He's a great zone beater type. Like he's gonna be a third down team that opposing team uh, opposing fans just hate. Like on third down, there's another uh, Polk first down. They're like, oh, fuck the Polk guy. And they they look at his stats. And it's like he had three catches for 58 yards, and it's like yeah, all one for first down. It's like you know, it's just one of those <laughs> types of guys. But he um. I just like him. I, I think he's just going to be a good pro. Again, I don't know what his upside is. I think it's lower uh, than a lot of guys that maybe he will go in. I'm a high. I'm I'm probably one of the higher guys on him. I have him in my 30s of my big board. Dane probably has him around 50 to 60. You know, kind of the late second, early third, which is where I think he will go. Um, but yeah, some uh, he's a second round type that I'm kind of and I, I do play a lot of dynasty. I am kind of looking at him as like a round three guy I can maybe get. Uh, as someone that I can sneak in because I think he can maybe just be that kind of good starter for a while, even if he won't be that Pro Bowl level type of guy. Makes a lot of sense with uh, Mr. Jalen Polk. How old is he, by the way? Because uh, I know he's another guy who transferred. It was only one transfer. Yeah. Um, but uh, is he is he entering as more like a finished product? Or like is I, he I think so, too. He, he's still only 21. Uh, he uh, So he is a younger, but he – to okay, me because because good news. He, yeah. he's not a freak athlete he's just like i said just a solid athlete and that and it shows up on film too like he he'll beat a guy catch it and then it gets tackled maybe a yard later he's not going to break a guy off but it's fine because everything to that point is good he doesn't get, have separation issues um that you maybe see some of these guys because he has good strength and everything so it, it's yeah there's just a lot to like with him that again it might be more of a real football good player that has say, decent, first downs decent stats. we don't care about those in fantasy. i know you don't care about first downs like he's that's the thing is like i don't think he might never he might be an 800 yard type guy with some decent amount of touchdowns that spots in but he's a guy that maybe has more than that say he goes to the bills or even the chiefs in round two like it could be a really good situation for that where he fills in as a super role player what is your gut second or third round for jalen poke by the way and second is where yeah, I think good. that's important that, in dynasty. I feel like getting in that second round is very, very important for a dynasty receiver. Um, one of the never ending Washington wide receivers who was the final yes. Husky wide receiver we need to talk about. Yes, Jalen McMillan. Uh, no relation to Nate, but he <laughs> is. Uh, I, I stained that right away when I first learned about him. It's like Seattle. It is like, the no, spelling. It's the weird spelling too. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm more uh, used to the O uh, in. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially Mac and Mick. We gotta get that. The, the, the Irish, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, the Irish, Irish people, Gosh, and all yeah. that. Yeah, but um, to him, I think his upside to me, and, and I think this is pretty decent upside. Is a Christian Kirk type, where slot vertical kind of intermediate vertical type of guy. Um, again, another guy. Even if he's the third uh, guy I'm listing here, I don't have him that much further down i have him more as like an early third i know that's like splitting hairs but maybe a half tier below polk but he's a good athlete again i think he's gonna be more from the slot but i think still he has upside to be a very good number two type um and again he will be maybe more boom busty as far as statistically where he'll have a big yardage game and the next game not a lot of catches and not a lot of yards um some some of those slot vertical guys can be like that like kirk can um depending on game plan and all that kind of stuff but I think he's going to find a home because he another guy that just does a lot of things well, uh, even if he's a little smaller, he's a different type of flavor than the other two. But I think teams are going to like him. And shoot, uh, Derek Lesson, I'll bring him up again. He ha sees him ahead of Polk um, and had him ring highly for Bleacher Report right now. But uh, there's fans of him uh, around the league. I see him more as a round three guy. But depending again on that situation, he could be a nice explosive weapon for somebody. 
Why did McMillan, by the way, I mean, and I guess he missed a few games last year. What was up with like the bigs? That was it just the receiver core too talented? And because he was he was almost 1100 yards in 2022. Yeah. He battled he battled an injury and he kept trying to play with it and kind of kind of get knocked out. So he played early, got hurt middle of the year, and then played at the end. Uh, but he was productive before that. Like last year, he was super productive as well. Um, he was and just. Polk came in and it was just kind of like, hey, <laughs> he's the guy uh, looking. He looks like he should have like entered the draft last year, probably looking at his especially last year's draft. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He would have gone round two in last year. I, I think if he, we knew that he would test like this too. Nate, can you confirm my theory that McMillan has excessive dog levels? <laughs> I think he does have I, excessive. Dog I, do, I, f- I just feel like every time I see a clip of him, I'm like, geez. God, this guy just just has all, dog in them. All he the, does. All, that's why I love these guys. Is all of them are like good. Like they're just yeah. good. Like and I, it's hard to pick one that I, I love. Well, dudes, I love the most. Let's be honest. But the other two, it's like I don't know. They 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 both have dog levels. They have high dog levels. Oh right? yeah, Adunze too. Yeah. Just going. Adunze, through, oh, yeah. Going through like all their draft stuff and like just looking at their stats. I'm just like, man, Washington has got to replace a lot of production. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, in 2024. Yeah, and uh, the offensive coordinator is gone, and yeah, yeah. the the coach is gone. Every one who contributed whatsoever Two, is gone. Uh, a round one left tackle, a round three right tackle. I think that won the top offensive line of the year. Uh, so uh, yeah, Washington might have a little drop this year. But, uh, I guess who is there though? Bill Belichick. Everybody. Yes, so it's, really. it's fine. It's all fine. We have we got got so many. Let's. Talk about Lad McConkey real quick, because oh yeah, um, we're getting a little excited. Um, he's the very interesting prospect. So just like uh, he's a box checker. Tell us about Lad. Yes, is he ahead of the Washington guys? He is. Oh, he's okay. one spot ahead of me for, uh, than Polk, but I have him right next to each other. Uh, Lad's awesome. Lad rocks. He, he's <laughs> he's not a slot guy. He's an outside guy that can play in the slot. Um, my comparison for him has been Emmanuel Sanders. And, oh. and again, when we're talking, that's the difference I think with him and Polk is Polk because lads face a lot of injuries as well. You know, just kind of not that elite or better, good body type as well. Um, where it's the difference where Polk, I feel is safer, even if lad does do a lot of things, I just like, I could picture him lad. There's some landing spots where it's like, okay, I like him better here than other spots, but he's a great route runner. He's a great athlete. He's got good hands. Uh, his, I, I called it, oh, this isn't going to hit. Denny doesn't like baseball, but they call it pitched pitch tunneling where it's like oh, two yeah. pitches look yeah, the yeah. same yeah, yeah, yeah his is his is route tunneling mm, like they, that's amazing all these that's routes a great look, concept yeah all the routes look the same and then he can break off of all those so uh i really like lad i would talk about high high end number two maybe even could be a target eater and like in a certain types of offenses where they're the kind of that low end one he he can eat that like he is like a volume will never be an issue for him because he can get open and he's a good athlete it's just really just staying healthy for him i was gonna say he's just got to stay healthy because it. the, the size is pretty great too for the kind of player he needs to be like he yep. is he's over six foot right and yep. uh, he's under four four um just stay healthy man so you think he is like a no doubt second round pick i know i'm not suggesting first but you think he's like safe oh, yeah. like the 33 he's- I I put it top 40. I would not even just say second round. I would say even top 40. Um, Because there's been some round one talk with him, like late, like 32, you know, to the Chiefs, something like 28. That'd be cool. That would be, yeah. Oh, the Chiefs want to be amazing. I know. It's, yeah, that that would be a real fun one. Yeah. Uh, uh, This is the first time I've ever heard a conversation about Lad McConkey without uh, Cooper Cup coming up. So I think we did. (laughs) They're so opposite. They're completely different. (laughs) The player that plays most like Cooper Cup is Brock Bowers, like that, which is funny. Yeah. 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 Shoot, even like Polk plays more like Cooper Cup than Lad McConkey. Lad McConkey does. I always want to say Lad McConkey for some reason, but just there's no L. I, it's yeah I, i've had hearing bowers before. uh comped to cup just leads to my oh, bowers gonna be an automatic bust it's too small man and you can't we can't be comping my even if he's a pass catcher well and i think that right. used properly i think that he, yeah. he he can be really good and you wrote uh nate you wrote a really good piece on bowers and how he is going to need to be used in a certain yes. way that is not you that is not fit the traditional uh, uh, you know, tight end uh, role in the NFL. I, I just, I have very little confidence that whoever drafts him is going to understand that. And they're just going to be like, kid, you're a tight end. Go play tight end. That's it. I, I've, the, it's so much like my angel and dove on my shoulders where I'm like, well, if he goes with the Rams or he goes with, you know, the Colts, or even if he goes with the Broncos, yeah, they're going to use him like this. And Sean Payton loves these guys. And it's like, he's going to go with like 
Nathaniel Hackett. You know, like, you know, like what, what I mean, it's just going to, it's, that's what's going to happen. And, yeah. and everyone's going to go, you had him as your fourth guy. It's like, no, I, I know, but he's really good. Trust me. Um, yeah. And I think what you're saying, Denny, is like, you do have to break your brain a little bit with him because he's his own thing. And yeah. I hate using the term and I keep using it though, is the offensive weapon thing, because he's just his own thing. He lined up in the slot more than he lined up as a tight end. And, but he won from there. And yeah, like, or, you know, and like you said, there's gotta be, he's more situation dependent than you'd want a true elite guy to be. So why I, this is a real question yeah. and I'm, I'm almost afraid to ask it. Why doesn't he just enter the draft as a receiver? It's, just, it's I don't know. It just gets labeled I, I, that I way. Because he, he does do the tight end stuff. He he does line up there, like as far as blocking and all that. So it, I think that's just what it is. I mean, if I if I were him, and the, the pay scale alone would say, no, I'm a receiver. Don't don't slot. dare call yeah, me yeah, a I'm tight end. Slot. Yeah, I know. I know, right? He should, especially the volume he'll get. Yeah. I there. If this were three years ago, maybe two years ago, I would just really be like, yeah, man, I, I've watched how NFL coaches use tight ends. There's no chance. There's only three spots. Watching how Ben Johnson for the Lions used Laporta, mm -hmm. how Dalton Kincaid got used with the Bills, what the Packers did with their guys, who I like. I like both of them, uh, Luke Musgrave and, and Tucker Craft. Um, even how the Rams used their guys. It's made me a little more optimistic about how receiving only quote-unquote tight ends are used. Because they're these coaches being younger, they're not going like, well, you got to block them. These you coaches, played, them. this you is got, These coaches played Madden. They played they, Madden. No, seriously though, they're like there is something to that where they go, well, he can't block, but he can beat that safety. So it's split them out, and so they've gotten a lot more creative of hiding these guys, and that's made me more optimistic about Bowers. It, again, I don't. You got to see it sometimes, but seeing how Laporta, Kincaid, half dozen other guys got, are getting used. And everyone's going to start stealing it, you know, because everyone's going to watch. And, and this spring, it's made me a little bit more lenient on this guy about like, okay, they can find ways to make him work where he can stay on the field. That's another thing too with Bowers and why even fantasy wise, I'm so I'm pretty high on him, is that he's going to be on the field every snap. Like he's not yeah. going to come off the field ever because he'll be a slot, and then when they're in big tight ends or big personnel, he'll be the wing tight end. So he'll never have to come off the field. So that's why he'll get that usage. I think no matter what. I hope so. With, with Bowers so too. too, you made an impor <laughs> really important point about like we're not breaking news by saying like well it just really depends on where he where he lands. But like right. if you're going to be a positionless player, so to speak, you can't end up with a positionless coach, so to speak. Like Nathaniel Hackett, like are you a head coach? Are you a coordinator? I don't know what you do. Arthur are Smith. You, yeah, are you good at any of this? And we need Brock <laughs> Bowers with someone who's like gonna the term know. positionless coach, passing yeah. game coordinator. <laughs> Is that yeah, passing it. Get out of here. Come on, man. I'll tell you something. Running. I, don't know. I mean, order. maybe maybe I'm I'm traumatized by the Kyle Pitts experience, but you know, he comes out and he can do everything. He's basically right. a wide receiver and he does nothing, you know, for, for fantasy purposes for three years. And it's because he went to a team and a coach that didn't have any interest in actually utilizing those that skill set. He, and that that was the thing with Pitts. They were they were trying to grow him into this other role. They're trying to like be like, hey, in two years they're going to grow you into, mm -hmm. you know, a I'm not going to compare him, but like we can keep you in line like a Gronk or a Kittle, not to like their extent, but like we can do all that with you. It just never clicked, and then he gets hurt, and it's just kind of like, all right, but you're not winning the one on ones like we need you to be if you're going to be a full time receiver. So it's like he's not, uh, yeah, he's Pitts, is, but that's why the Pitts and Bauer stuff is that they're so opposite. Pitts was lining up outside. And a pit, uh, Bowers is more inside, okay. so it's just that even it's a Cooper Cup or a T Higgins comparison. Right. You know, I will say, yeah, back. I think for those that reason, almost uh, exactly Pitts being outside so much, I, I felt like his like franchise killing potential as a pick was much higher than Brock Bowers. And I liked Kyle Pitts. I was just like so worried he's going to end up somewhere where they did not use him properly. He did, and yeah, it was, <laughs> I, I I am he more to go to a winning Brock team, Bowers. like a team yes. that was already set. That the that's. They're they they're luxury picks. They really are, but it's like, but they're yeah. luxury picks that could put you over the freaking top. They're high end luxury picks. Yeah, high it's a dangerous game to be playing. It is. But yeah, it is. High end, but that's why I want them with the Rams because it's like McVay will use them right, and I have no worries yeah. about it. Like, I yeah. I would trust I would trust him to do the right thing. Uh, you know, a team the like right the Jets. Thing. I've seen. <laughs> I, I've seen. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the Jets. Talk, you know, uh, in the in the Brock Bowers running that. Oh, that to me, that's a disaster. I I, yeah. I don't trust the Jets at all to know how to use him. Uh, I, I just, I don't know, man. I just, I feel like no matter how good he is, it's going to, it's going to require a really good landing spot.
Yep. Nate, we've taken too much of your time. We're actually not even going to be able to get the running backs. But before we let you out here, Denny well, should have asked this during the quarterback section. He wanted to ask you about something you wrote recently, oh. on like smaller quarterbacks from a weight perspective, yeah, uh, not a size perspective, right? Not a height perspective. So I, I I posted about how uh, Jaden Daniels is really light. You know, he was. Uh, I think did he weigh in at two ten or two oh five? 210. It was 210. And, that was, and, he was then, and then took an awesome Bell. powers P afterwards. Right. right. Exactly. I, He's probably eating yeah. Taco Bell five. Right. So so we're talking massive water weight. It, for much of his career at LSU, he, he was playing at 190, 195. Mm -hmm. That's probably more like what he'll be playing at. Yep. And you guys mentioned on the athletic football show, he didn't go to a small school without like a good weight program or a good nutrition program. He went to LSU. <laughs> okay. Like he, in like, the bayou, gonna, like in the south, man. It, right. If they were gonna fatten him up, they were going they they would have done yes. it. Okay. Right. And and he and he didn't. So the the you you mentioned on the X platform, formerly known as Twitter, that <laughs> uh you have uh sorry, uh you you that you have a very small sample of guys that size, not not that height, but that weight yeah. who have succeeded in the NFL, and they it basically comes down to Kirk Cousins. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> It, it's it. I also uh, wanted to mention real quick because I listened to the show. I ate it up. I really enjoyed it. I the, the, here's here were my takeaways on Jaden Daniels. Listening to your recent show on the quarterbacks in this draft class, uh, Jaden Daniels NFL ceiling is capped because he's not creative. He doesn't throw to the middle of the field, and at LSU it had nothing to do with play design. He's like Justin Fields. It feels with thirty pounds lighter, had a much weaker arm, and were slower. Mm -hmm. His closest comp is Rich Gannon. Okay, no, I, I threw out a rich. I said that was like maybe his high end comp is rich. High end comp. So, yeah, so I, I, so I really, weird. I do feel like, and I, I, this confirmed my priors, which I appreciate. Yeah. I feel like Jane Daniels is a, yeah, is a coach killing, franchise destroying pick in the first five picks in the first round. Period. Yeah, your words. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, my words. I will not. I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna leave it hanging because I'm just. Yeah, I'm not shaking my head. No. I. Uh, yeah, that's why he's 20th on my big board and not yeah. top five. I am not taking the bait on this because there's just so many alarm bells. <laughs> the weight one, and that's what blows my mind. It's not height. It's weight. There. It's boxers don't aren't heavyweights because they're both six four. You know, they're, right, they're, yeah, they're yeah, heavyweights because yeah. they're above a weight class. That's exactly. Like. That's, I know. that's what I know. drives me insane about a physical sport that we just throw out weight. Like it's nothing. And, and yeah, no, the quarterback one, it, it is. It's uh, so I looked at quarterbacks under 205. Yeah. And that's really 210 is the threshold, but I went even 205 because there's no way he's 210. And with his frame and everything, it's, and this is also his age. He's older. And most of the growing happens. And, uh, God, I don't even want to get all of this, but it's like 20, 21, 22. And then usually you're kind of filled out by that point and maybe put on five pounds. But when I looked at it and I could go full history, but just since the year 2000, there's only like, there's only quarterbacks that just started 14 or more games. I'm looking at no other statistical thing here. Just started 14 or more games, 205 pounds or less in a single season. Kirk Cousins, Doug Flutie, Jeff Garcia, Bryce Young. It's not good. That's it. Just well, started. Hold, hold on. It's not calamitous. Um, there's some interesting, you know, Doug Flutie did some interesting Stop. things. Oh my. <laughs> After 10 years in Canada, yeah, you know, sure. You know. I mean, sure, he had to go play with the Alouettes for 10 years, but right. um, but that's another thing. Oh, and Aaron Brooks, that was the other one. Um, but pretty. that's a fourth round pick, a fourth round pick, Doug Flutie, who's you know, depends on where Trump drafted him, but it, it's like it, it, <laughs> that's not a, joke. Oh, not a joke. Uh, he was like, yeah, I think he was number one pick there. Um, <laughs> but uh, Jeff Garcia, undrafted, <laughs> Flutie and treated very unfairly. <laughs> and then, yeah, <laughs> and then Bryce, yeah, Sorry. um, but. That's just, again, that's just started. But then if you looked at, I, I looked at um, just one stat where I just did adjusted, uh, I think, net yards per attempt. And I, I, because that's nice where you can look at, I think it was seven yards or more yeah, versus six what, yards or more. Said, yeah. It's top 50 percentile, whatever. It's like mm -hmm. an above average season for a quarterback. It's the only quarterbacks that have hit that since 2000 is Kirk Cousins four times and Jeff Garcia once. So we're just saying, not only just starting, there's barely any guys, but just having an above average season. That's what we're saying, this guy's a starter right away. It's two guys, yeah. and only one did it multiple seasons, and that's Kirk Cousins, who's already a fourth round pick outlier. So, I don't know. That's a lot of alarm bells just off of one thing, and then the other alarm bells throwing over the middle because guys only get worse at that at the NFL. They they don't get better. Oh. It's too hard. <laughs> and I've compared it to th shooting threes. It's you know you kind of you can learn it in the NBA if you do that stuff, but in football, that's the juiciest spot to throw. And that's yeah. why I love May, and I really like Williams. He never does it. 
and the excuse is, well, what you would do it too if you had those receivers on the outside. He never did in his entire career. Didn't matter what the receivers were. Didn't matter what the offense was. Right. It gets harder at the NFL. It's there's bodies there. It's just and the fact that he doesn't do it. He's playing like Justin Fields, Jalen Hurts, Russell Wilson, Daniel Jones. Those are the other guys right now with this statistical profile. He's an outlier weight wise. That's a lot of alarm bells that yeah. people are ignoring. And that's before that we get into he's 24 years old. That started 50 or more games and still has other stuff. So yeah. <laughs> thank you for I letting me get thank that. you for letting me get to that because I kind of just been like beating around the bush around it, kind of going like, <laughs> I don't know, there's a lot of alarm bells here, guy. <laughs> I think it's no, I mean, I, I think it's it's worth mentioning. Uh, I have been reminded uh, on the X platform that he won the Heisman. Oh, so that that is uh, that is something you're you're not you're not incorporating incorporating that into your evaluation, Nate. That's yes. what I want to say. Did you. I watch him run past Florida? You know, it's like the Florida yeah. defense sucks until it's draft time, <laughs> and then it and then it becomes and then it becomes an SEC defense. That's that's what happens. It's a Florida defense. Oh, oh my God, that defense coordinator sucks. Look at these right. guys running around in February. It's an SEC defense. Look yeah. at that speed. <laughs> so he ran good. by SEC defenders, right? How many of you guys go? I mean, that's it's just it's hilarious to me. That's the other one that always gets me. He's beating an NFL corner. No, 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 no. That's a college corner. Yeah, that's a college corner. That's not. That, that's not. It's Japan. quite literally a college corner. Yeah, yeah, that's not an NFL. Yeah, he might get drafted. Like how many guys? Are those like how many corners are there that we say are good in the NFL? You're saying that guy's good, better than that. So that's another uh, thing that was <laughs> grinds my gears. You guys just got Jaden Daniels. Like I don't mean this. Like he basically his case is he's got to be special. He's got to continue to be special, and that's just like a hope and a prayer. If, if he were you. twenty, if he were flipped with McCarthy as far as yeah. age wise, all that I'd be way more like, Hey, okay. He can learn these things to get better at it. It's a lot of starts and good situations with, I think a good coach. I know he's a, kind of a memed guy, but Brian Kelly, like those offenses are he's like, meme guy. yeah, he's memed, uh, but it's those offenses aren't bad. Like I watch that offense. It's sound. They do the right things. I watch North Carolina half the time. I'm going like, what is this? What do you guys, I watch USC Lincoln Riley, gets cliff in there and they lose their mind last year and i'm just like watching it like i can't translate what they're doing so i have to watch i watch daniels every play i know what they're i know what they're trying to accomplish and that's again what kind of is like all right where are we growing here literally from a size perspective but also like mentally because it's, he's already got maxed out in a good offense like again it doesn't get easier and where's the room to grow so right the the, the deep ball and the mobility and that's it there's, that's it. There, and it, this is, well, there's nothing else and that's hurts at 30 pounds lighter or feels at 30 pounds lighter, you know. I guess if you guys are having this conversation, I mean, I'm assuming some of it, maybe he'll be like the big surprise guy, yeah. like oh, all I'm, spring. I thought he was going top three. And it's how like much I'm getting yelled at thing. the last couple of weeks, man. It's, 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 it's uh, I know it's the guys that have him won. I've been really kind of going like, really, yeah, okay. really, all right. Yeah. All right. Quietly like, removing them from like your list, like your draft writer list on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Nate. You said you had 35, 40 minutes. Um, what do we do? I really hope you didn't have an appointment to get to. Yeah. No. Because we, we blew by that. Um, I've always, I'm telling you, it's the safest bet. Always <laughs> bet the over. Uh, and, you can uh, do it every single time. I'm the opposite of a service academy game in college football uh, where you always take the under. You always take the over with me. <laughs> well, our listeners know to take the over on Denny and I. Denny and I. So yeah, we probably had no chance. Um, but really, really appreciate your time. You got to follow Nate on Twitter at Nate underscore Tice. You have to listen to the athletic football show. You have to check out what he's been pumping out for Yahoo. Um, Nate, any final word you need to get out there? Draft what, two weeks away. Um, just how's that even let, possible? Let it come. Just get, uh, get here. Yes, two weeks, yes, two weeks too long. <laughs> no, but thank you guys. I mean, this was awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me. This yeah, thanks, Nate. Yeah. Thank you so much for Nate ch making the time for us. And please check out Nate everywhere. I just mentioned Nate. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Um, and we'll be right back after this. Get your weekday started with Bet the Edge. Join Jay Croucher and Drew Densick as they break down the NFL draft, NBA, and much more. New episodes drop at 6 a.m. Eastern on the NBC Sports YouTube channel, and you can find them in podcast form wherever you download and subscribe. So whether you're looking to get involved in draft props or futures or wagers, check out Jay and Drew for more insight. Don't forget, this Saturday, the Premier League continues on NBC, where Bruno Fernage and Manchester United look to keep pace in the top half of the table. When they face Bournemouth, the matchup begins at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, only on NBC and Peacock. 
talking about names, Bruno Fernage is like one of the most difficult names to pronounce in the entire world. And, and you do it well. Promo. I do. It's for it's spelled Fernandez, but he says Fernage, I believe. Fernandez. And that one was yeah, that one was that was hard. I panicked when I saw that there. I um, yeah, I, I would have passed out. Like, yeah, I so really, really good stuff from Nate. Uh, but now that he's gone, we can find his riff about the eclipse for the final ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> It has been bugging me. You said you fell for the eclipse scam. Would you say scam? I don't know. Like the idea. Yeah, I was just making fun of the idea that you had to wear glasses to look up because back yeah, you, in. You definitely do. Back in 2017, uh, we had Odell Beckham looking at the eclipse um, without glasses. We had the president of the United States looking at the eclipse without glasses. So uh, I just I thought I actually thought that, that it would catch on like like this is like. They're, they're selling these glasses to profit off of you or something like, like, look what they took from you, uh, like a real view of the, of the sun. But, uh, but I, I did use the glasses and it was pretty awesome. I have to yeah, say. Yeah. It's my man. I was in the path of totality for the second time and that's cool. It is a tr truly special experience. Um, did it get completely dark? It does. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get like, like pitch black dark uh -huh. but it gets like all like the lights come on you know oh, like wow. the, and like the temperature drops 10 to 15 degrees um it's like basically like i would say 15 minutes before complete darkness at night that kind of dark okay so you don't so get like to, dusk yeah yeah you don't get to pitch black but you get to like deep dusk yeah, it's cool um and it's very you know it's unnerving and like an inter in a good way um, so it's an amazing, if you can ever check it out, the next one is not in the continental United States for 20 years. And the next big one is not for 21. Yeah. Years. Yeah. I, so I, I feel like, uh, having one in 2017 and then one in 2024 has kind of fooled people into thinking that this is going to happen every once in a while. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. like, um, uh, I saw some posts yesterday on the X platform where people were saying, uh, you know, the, what, what's the big deal? This happens all the time. And and the, the the you know rebuttal is no it doesn't it does not <laughs> and most certainly the, the 2044 one goes to Glacier National Park and I believe both Dakotas that's the only places it's hitting really in the contiguous United States 2045 it's cutting another swath through the heartland so begin planning for 21 years from now that's interesting yeah. I did see that hotel rooms in Missouri and Ohio and other parts of the country in the in the what is it the total what is it called the path of totality path of totality uh we're going for like five times their normal were. price and so you know i live 50 miles from where so in 2017 we were in the path which was that's what it got me addicted to eclipses so i'm like i can't miss this one but you know i felt like we're literally 50 miles outside of where the path began so like monday morning we'll get up just a little early we'll start driving and we'll get there easily i wanted to drive to cape Girardeau, missouri which is normally two hours away and uh, we made it 58 miles, um, but we made it inside the path. I had to settle. It took four hours to drive. Wow, really? How gridlocked it was. Wow. Um, but I made it to Bloomsdale, Missouri, a town I had never heard of. And this is not a joke. Watch the eclipse from a gas station, like Berm, like a, like a, and, uh, but it was amazing. That's beautiful. And, yeah, it was beautiful. It was very American. Uh, it was sort of Philip 66, um, like side yeah. lawn. I, uh, I was among many uh, parents picking up their kids early from school to get to our uh, our deck on time to view the eclipse. And uh, it was a, a, a line of parents just just begging their kids to hustle up and let's get in the car because we got to get there. So to the folks who maintain the berm at the Phillips 66 I-55 um, gas station in Bloomsdale, Missouri, we are, are props to you. <laughs> we did. We managed to get into the path of totality. We managed to end this pot. I mean, is there anything to talk about here? Uh, Anthony I mean, Richardson is throwing footballs. Yeah, I thought I told you, but didn't we just talk about that? Yeah, we he is, he is. Is he actually throwing now, or is he like claiming he's going to be? He's throwing, throwing forty. Football? He's throwing forty uh, footballs a day and no more. Is that serious? Yeah, yeah, right. no, yeah. The athletic reported that. Yeah. Wow, um, it's on the athletic. You know, it's true. It's yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I. I, I guess that means that he's ahead. Uh, everybody's ahead of schedule, obviously, on all injuries. But it's true. Uh, Anthony, no one has been ever been more ahead of schedule than Anthony Anthony Richardson right now <laughs> with his shoulder injury. <laughs> yeah. So, man, Anthony Richardson, he's he was like one of the guys last year, like the make or break guys. He's just the make or break again for twenty. Oh man, so yeah. Better. And you're not going to get any discount on him. No, you're not. 
that, that is, the, the crowd has become so sharp that yeah no yes one, no one drafts like he barely played last year i mean yeah so the the idea like uh, we got spoiled because i think before lamar's uh 2019 mvp season he was going in like the 10th round of drafts and there's something like i could not understand like what what are you doing what are yes. we doing with this he was one of the very last ones that and and that, and that was it we're never going to have that luxury again like like we we know that to crack the code you got to have a rushing quarterback and anthony richardson was highly highly efficient as a rusher if only he could you know stay upright just don't lower your shoulder directly into people and you'll be totally yeah, fine. that'd be good it'll be totally fine for us to end the show um we'll be back though on thursday denny and i have mr kyle Dvorak, we have absolutely no clue what we're going to talk about. <laughs> we're more, more eclipse talk. Yeah. <laughs> the top top 10 Pat eclipse moments. You and Kyle are both falling asleep. <laughs> and then when I saw the look on my kid's face, guys, <laughs> Kyle's like, I'm never having kids. And like, let's move on, please. So like, but you don't understand. All right. Uh, no, it was special. The number number three cool. moment. Number three moment was finding that the Gatorade in the gas station was half off. <laughs> <laughs> so, and by the way, the gas station employees did. I heard them debating like how long they could spend outside. They had gotten permission from corporate. This is not a joke to go watch the eclipse, and so they did. No one's manning the gas station, so I, I stole two blue Powerades. <laughs> no, no, never drink. The, the cops are coming. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, for Denny Carter. For Nate Tice, I am Patrick Darty. We hope you enjoyed today's show. We'll be back on Thursday with Kyle.